Hi there gang. This evening, well just before I start I'm going to close the door so the cat doesn't get in. Sorry about that. But you know what she's like. When she's in, she just takes control. She's Burmese and Burmese are like that. Okay, what I'm going to talk about this evening is a subject that is dear to all our hearts in praise of poop or the scoop on poop as I will call my next little booklet to you. A lot of people don't think about their poop or if they do they think about it in very behind the mouth kind of thing. Don't smile about it, don't laugh about it, don't look at it, don't know about it and they don't want to know about it, thank you very much. When uh, people enter my yoga classes I kind of confront them with that. It's uh, amongst my first class lessons is uh, are you a, a fluffy floaty person or a stinky sinky person? Do your poops float or do they sink? Do they stink so much that they take the paint off the walls or are they beautiful and wonderful? Most people don't know. They know that there's a smell but they don't know why there should be one and they hardly ever link what they eat to what they poop. At uh, one time, this is my favourite story about poop, uh -oh. One of the mums of one of my junior classes came to me and she said, please don't talk to my son about poop. And I said, well, what's the problem? And apparently Junior had got very, very enthusiastic about it and with his little clipboard went out every morning and interviewed the neighbours about their poop habits and uh, whether they were fluffy floaties or stinky sinkies and if they looked and if not, why not? And uh, his mother got very upset after she discovered that he'd done this for about four or five mornings. I think the child needs a medal because more than a television advert, more than a health department notice, more than a discreet letter in your letterbox, that child going around and asking his neighbours about their poop habits would have changed their poop habits. I bet you that every child that every adult that that child interviewed now looks behind them even if it's just they don't know why they're doing it but they would so you know when you look behind you what you're looking for is how your digestive system is working and whether there's any problems and you don't know that until you start looking you're just guessing up to that point your poop should be the consistency of a stiff toothpaste. It should be about as hard to get out of your tube as it is to get out of your toothpaste tube. You shouldn't need to take the novel War and Peace into the toilet uh, if you're sitting there contemplating life, unless that's the only peace and quiet you can get, and I can understand that. It should be just go in down the tube, everything okay, look behind you, yep, nothing untoward, get on with your day. And that should happen once, twice or three times a day depending on what you're reading, what you're doing and everything like that. So what you should really be paying attention to is how much fiber you're having, how much fluid you're having and how much fitness you're having. Are you fit? Are you walking? Are you doing things? Uh, you know, we're all changed to our computers. Me too. And you just have to make time to get up and do stuff. Thank goodness God made leaves because for the last two months, every afternoon I go up and I, outside and I do about uh, three quarters of an hour of leaf lifting and then I go for a walk. And, you know, that's quite a lot of energy for the day. I recently saw a fabulous uh, feature on the television show called Food Unwrapped. I don't know whether you've ever watched it. It's on paid television. And 
it's shown a couple of times now and it's well worth it if you can uh, beg your television channel to show it again. What it showed was a, 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 a sort of a, a demonstration about how your intestines actually work and they had a bag which they put stuff in that you would normally eat and think that it was doing you good and then they had uh, joined to that bag 20 feet or something like that of, in, uh, of uh, pig intestine which is fairly close to what we have and they got the the presenter to actually move the bolus, move the food after it had been squished in the tummy bag move the food down the intestines and they timed how long it took and the result and you know it was really an eye-opener to see how some foods reacted you know some things that you think are, oh that's terrific you know like lettuce for instance you think you're doing a good deed when you eat lettuce but it just goes to a, a, a sort of a sticky slush and it doesn't make any difference at all whilst oatmeal which is just wonderful and prunes not prune juice, prunes, prune juice, you might as well just use it on your garden because it's not doing any good to you at all. It's making you feel like you're doing something good but it's not doing anything good. They proved that on this program. So prunes have a chemical in them that really does help the stuff get down to the toilet bowl. And oatmeal and prunes and stuff like that, they not only make sure that everything gets down to the toilet bowl easily and within a good time, uh, but they take all the refuge that is stuck onto the sides of the intestines with them. So they make sure that it's all nice and clean on the way down. So you need a mix of soluble and insoluble fiber in order for your gut to work efficiently. And if you get my little booklet, I haven't put it up yet, I'll put it up in the next couple of days. If you hop on to uh, www.myyogabooks.etsy.com, you will find my book there. If you can't remember that, nick over to janehopewilliams.com and they're there as well because they're sister, sister sites to Etsy, Etsy and Pattern. Uh, sister sites and I'm on both so if you go to janehopewilliams.com you'll find me and if you go to www.myyogabooks.etsy.com you'll also find me and you'll find interesting books uh, particularly at the moment about hemp and about nutrition with regards to hemp and about the yoga of hemp and you know I've put all those up in the last week or so and shortly there will be yeah, my scoop on poop uh, which will be well worth looking at. And with regards to hemp and the scoop on poop, hemp is entirely helpful if you have uh, poop problems because uh, hemp, particularly if you get the unheld seeds, which are not that easy to find, but you can find them on eBay and they will be sent to you under a very discreet wrapper. Uh, if you get unhulled seeds, they provide a really fantastic fibre. And I was really surprised when I put them in the processor and whisked them up exactly how much oil was in them. They really stuck to the side of the processor. And I could see how uh, producers would find it very entrancing to squeeze oil out of it because I don't imagine it would be terribly hard at all to do. They would appear to have more oil uh, and then actually olives or something like that which look to be a hard job to squeeze the oil out. If I can get the oil out in my processor, well goodness me, you know, it's not going to take much to, to uh, squeeze it out from a commercial point of view. Uh, you can also buy hemp powder that is from unhulled seeds, whole seeds. <coughs> In America they have a soluble one, but I wouldn't go for that, it's too processed. So if you're getting a hemp powder, get the, the ordinary hemp protein powder, or if you can, uh, get the protein powder from unhulled seeds. If you want fibre in your diet, wow, 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 that is fantastic. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. If you uh, get the unhulled seeds and you get my little booklet on... Um, 
my diet called Healthy As, you will see how to make cookies, dukkha, um, gingerbread, all kinds of yummy things from seeds or unhulled seeds. I use primarily unhulled seeds and they're just absolutely fantastic. They're hard to eat unless you do process them, unless you put them in your um, mini processor. I've got a mini processor with a, which I put them in. Uh, they're hard to deal with because they're, they're a little bit too crunchy for me. Uh, but once you've got them in your processor, they whiz down to a beautiful fibery powder and that is great to sprinkle on the top of your, well, salad or soups or muesli or anything at all. It's very good. I make fantastic dips. You'll find the recipe on Healthy As. And I'll probably put some recipes on the, on the bottom of uh, my scoop of poop. So this is, this is a call out to all you persons who have not been looking in the pan uh, to start doing it because it's going to save you from a lot of disaster later on. You know, I have entered a toilet, and I'm sure you have, where people have have been, and the smell is just make you gag. Uh, and that says that that person needs a good talking to about what they're eating and what they're doing and what their, you know, their general habits, uh, because there's something deathly wrong with a poop that has that much smell. Another thing about hemp that I forgot to say to you is that there is in the cannabinoids there is a relaxing component it relaxes you that's why it's very good for people who are highly strung ang anxious and depressed uh, so if you start homeopathically taking a range of hemp through the day you will find that when you come to your toilet needs uh, you can sit there and not worry and, and that not worrying, you just know you will do it. Uh, that kind of confidence in your body will mean that the poop will just flow through. If you're sitting there all scrunched up knowing it's not going to happen and uh, and worrying about this and worrying about that, and uh, well, it just makes everything more difficult. So yes, hemp helps poop on a, <laughs> on a lot of levels. And, you know, I'm on the hemp trail at the moment and I think I'm going to remain there because, goodness me, it's helped me so much. It's gotten rid of a dermatitis that I've just had for years and the doctor said that I'd need this and need that and have to have high-powered drugs and whatever. I resisted all that, but I didn't know what I could do. And without really taking hemp for anything at all just to see how it worked, I've noticed that I now no longer have the dermatitis, so that's very good, isn't it? And uh, my poop habits, having been not terrific, have just moved into the into the beautiful. So I now understand what the rest of you uh, who don't have poop problems, uh, how you can look so relaxed when you come out of the bog. Um, I can too. Uh, so really start talking about your poop, start making it a family subject, have a look behind you when you go to the toilet, make sure that you put soluble and insoluble fibres, not necessarily something you buy from the chemist, into your daily regime and please, please look at hemp as a nutritional supplement that you really need. If you want to know more about it, I certainly have written lots about it. So hop onto either of those sites, download anything you can about the hemp. I think uh, there's three or four booklets there now and I'll put up more and more and more as I uh, get more into it. You know, I'll put up, I think I'm going to do one on pain and uh, one on sort of the diseases or conditions of the aged. Uh, I hope I don't go there. And... Uh, you know, Woody Allen said, I don't mind dying, but I don't want to be there when it happens. Well, right now, there's so much that I want to do that I feel a bit like Woody. So please, please pay attention and put hemp into your diet. You won't get giggly. It's not about getting high. This is a different kind of a cannabis altogether. This is the good cousin and marijuana is the outlaw cousin, if you think of it like that. And so I'm talking about the good cousin, 
cannabis sativa that you won't get high from, but it has amazing health benefits. And bit by bit by bit, I will keep you informed. I won't tell you to do anything that I'm not doing myself. So it just takes a little bit longer because I am the guinea pig. Uh, I do have some clients who um, help me in this regard, but primarily I like to report on things that I experience for myself. There are some things I can't report on, like recovering from chemotherapy and all those, but uh, my students are really uh, giving me rave views about hemp and I am passing it on to you. But first things first, the scoop on poop. I have wanted to say that for years and years and years and years, and now I can. Namaste.